In the year 1572 of the Sixth Astral Era, the armies of the Eorzean Alliance and the Gallian Empire met in battle upon the fields of Cartano. In the midst of that terrible carnage, weary soldiers craned their heads upwards and looked upon Crimson Dalamud with horror as the lesser moon shattered and the elder primal Bahamut burst forth, an avatar of fury determined to lay waste to all and sundry, so ended an era and the world as we know it. In the days preceding and following this calamity, brave souls steeled themselves for the challenges ahead, and it was thanks to their concerned efforts that Eorzea survived to see another day. And so that brings us to the first chapter of the Tales from the Calamity, read from the Chronicles of Light short story compendium. The first chapter here, Where Victory and Glory Lead. We are lost, thought Merylweb Blowfish when, immured for eons and free at last, the primal Bahamut laid waste to the Cartano Flats, burning Eorzeans and Garleans alike. But I will find a way. Tearing her gaze away from the bloody churn, she bit down gently on her tongue, an old commander's trick, and despite the ash-laden air, the voice that issued from her throat was as clear as compass wind. Belay previous orders. All Maelstrom units are commanded to fall back, effective immediately. In the distance, the Admiral caught a glimpse of Archon Louiswar's resolute silhouette, arms raised in the rite of summoning. Not even the Twelve can help us now, she thought with something like despair as she swung herself into the saddle. Dalamud has hatched, and no man can unbreak an egg. Give the foreign levy priority. Let the main host cover their retreat and bring up the rear. Einzar Slafferson let go of the bridle as Merylweb took hold of the reins. A shard of the false moon had pierced the mail under his right arm, she saw. Blood riled, dark and steady. Her adjutant would likely not survive a hard ride. Get those adventurers to safety, she repeated. I shall send you stragglers. We must regroup. See to it. At once, Admiral, Einzar snapped a salute. He knows me too well to waste time arguing. Merylweb reflected as she urged her faithful bird to a gallop. And he knows most of our runners are dead, or near as damn it. A sharp quare brought her back to the present. Good girl, Vicky, she murmured as the chocobo sped onwards through a blur of death and ruin. Fall back, fall back to the main host. Merylweb called again and again until the route became a stream, then a river, flowing towards Einzar and, she hoped, safety. But there was a knot in the crowd, fighting its way against the tide until it emerged at the rear, then pushing on towards the Garlean position. Always. Merylweb fought without rancor and spurred her chocobo forward. Always there are those who put glory before victory. Save your breath, Admiral. I mean to make those Garlean curs pay, and pay their will, Rosewyn spat and Merrill Webb was reminded of the old saying, pirates weep with their swords, and their tears are red. So many sirens, Spleeny Abril won't sing no more, nor Anis Black Eye, nor... Ah, there you are, you liverless tin-potted bastards. A savage joy blazed in Rosewind's eyes at the sight of something behind Merrill Webb, and the Maelstrom commander touched her spur to Victory's left flank as she unholstered her pistols in one smooth motion. Death penalty barked, and a Garlean legionnaire tumbled backwards, two sharp coughs from Annihilator, and more men fell, to reveal the beetle-black gleam of Magitek armor cresting the rise. It has a beak, Merylweb thought with strange calm, her legs squeezing Victory's flanks of their own accord. The chocobo sprang as the Magitek cannon roared. Then Merylweb was falling, the world drowning in blood and feathers, and she knew no more. The most rest you've had in years, I'll wager. Merrill Webb awoke to a familiar sight, her quarters on the Triumph and Einzar, his face graven with fatigue, but alive and on his feet. How long? she demanded. Present course and speed. Two days, Limsa, eight knots, he answered. The Alliance regrouped in Thanalan, where the alchemists saw to our hurts. They meant to keep you abed in Uldar, but I assured them that would not be necessary. We are crossing the Strait of Melfort for home. The sirens? 
Roswin? Einzar laughed. Merrowweb could almost hear the rust in it. Command, especially the command of a retreating force, was a somber business. The bloody executioners hauled you from the front like pullers with a bulging net, but they had no luck coaxing Captain Roswin to join the retreat. Then came the last of the Dread Pirate Crews three, and Kraken's arms and Carvalane swept her up onto the saddle like a bloody knight of Ishgard. Last I saw, they were trading curses. Good, Merrill Webb willed her eyes to stay open. She was suddenly very tired, and could not bring her mind the names of the others who had been present. No matter, Einzar would know. The retreat from Cartano. I ordered a unit to be given priority. Did you get them to safety? Einzar looked at her, his brow furrowed. Beg pardon, Admiral? My orders were to bring up the rear as the main host retreated, gathering any stragglers you directed towards us, and then begin regrouping. You did not order that any be given priority over another. The coming days were too full for Merrowweb or Einzar to fret over much about her odd lapse. She had taken a blow to the head, after all, and it was a trifle compared to what awaited them in Vilebrand. As the triumph neared home, they saw livid crystals bursting from Pharos Sirius, flaunting their corruption for all to see. Galadian Bay was a floating cartano, the sea strewn with bodies, debris and hollow-eyed survivors of a tidal wave that had scoured the coastline. Einzar was lucky, Merrowweb thought as she surveyed the destruction. What size these shards to make an eighth hell of this fair anchorage, and what of we who had been spared? How can we go on when so much has been lost? I will find a way. Merrill Webb ordered that the Maelstrom's temporary command be established at the Morrowby Dry Docks, sheltered from the worst of a great wave by the god's grip. From there, the remains of Limsa Lamince's great armada sailed with food and supplies, aid and succor, women of strength and men of compassion. Admiral Merrill Webb slept little. But when she did, it was always one of two dreams that she dreamt. In one, she bit down on her tongue and cried out, Give them priority, let the main host cover their retreat. In the other, she rode a destria in the cool night, the bird crooning contentedly and the rider murmuring, Good girl, Vicky. Time passed. Some wounds healed, others did not. The fishing boats returned to the sea, and the merchants, stowadors, and cut purses to the docks. The new Maelstrom command took shape on the upper decks, the ships of the Armada returned to their proper anchorage, and the Morrowby dry docks were recommissioned as a shipyard. During those turbulent days, those who knew Merrill Webb best, and they were not many, remarked that she had been changed by Cartano. To the scores that came to the Admiral for help, she gave no false comfort, but neither was she as hard as once she had been. She spoke instead of hope, courage, and for the lost warriors who stood with the Archon on the Cartano Flats. For this Merrill Webb won the love of her people, yet struggled to accept it. So unsettling did the thought seem to her, that one night, unable to sleep, she wandered the city, finding herself at length outside the Ishgardian stable, as young birds murmured drowsily within. When Naldik and Vimelis began work on the first of the Thalassocracy's new warships, there was no question as to whom the honour of naming it would go. One fine day soon after, half of the city turned out to see the victory's keel laid, when the Admiral of Limsa Laminsa inscribed her name upon the oak with a great flourish, the cheers rolled like thunder across the tranquil waters of Galadian Bay, and set the gulls and ravens flapping from every mast. And that was the first chapter of the Tales from the Calamity, which I hadn't actually seen before. This was actually launched on one of the Lodestone pages a few years ago, if I remember correctly. But uh, it's been thankfully put together with all of the other side stories up until, I believe, just before Tales from the Shadows. So we have the Stormblood ones as well, all into a hardback book, which of course you can get on the Final Fantasy XIV official store. And I'll link some links to that in the description. So thank you once again for watching and indeed listening to this short story. And I'll see you all next time.